power in multiple load systems. Problems where multiple real and reactive loads are connected to a single source, so like at a, at a distribution point, a uh, switch room, you've got um, a, a main incomer that's got several loads connected to it. Yep. Can be so you can solve these by simply summing up all the individual real, reactive, and components together. So, in the example we're going to ha look at, just sum up all the watts, sum up all the Qs, and add them all together, and you can then calculate an overall apparent power as well. Okay, and the way we go about doing that is to draw a slightly different diagram of the same system. So, the system is redrawn as a system of single line power buses. These are not the red ones that drive down the road, but we can just draw single lines to represent um, a three phase uh, conductor because we're not interested in individual flows. And then we put hours on there to indicate the power flow. So an inductor has taken reactive power from the system. It's a plus Q. So you've got two of them and the arrows going from the system to the inductor. We've got capacitors that give reactive power or said to back to the system. So they are negative Qs in the overall scheme of things. Resistive loads are simply powers, positive. And then a motor is going to have a portion of power and a portion of positive Q as well. for instance, and there might be other loads that have got plus Qs and plus powers as well, transform fed systems, welders and so on. Alright, so we'd redraw the system like that, showing the overall flows of reactive and real power from the system. So, on the next page is that power system we were looking at with the values added to those arrows. So, we've got 9 kVar going back from the C1, we've got 3.5 kVar being drawn from L1, R2 has taken 6 kilowatts, R1 2.5 kilowatts, and so on. Yeah, we're going to use that to calculate. The total reactive power drawn from the supply, the total real power drawn from the supply, the apparent power drawn from the supply, to the KVA, what the line current is, and the power factor of that complete system. So, this is what we do. One, the total Q is all the positive Qs, all the, all the inductors, so we've got 3.5 for L1 plus 3.2 for L2 and then we got minus 9 for C1 and minus 12 C2. And we can just use the figures before, because they're all in multiples of a thousand. They're all killers, so we can all ignore the killer, but our answer will be kilovars or kilowatts. Yep.
So our total is, in this case, minus 7.3 kvar, if my calculations are right. Oh, hang on, we missed that one. Yeah, motor, plus 7. Now it should add up to minus 7.3. Yeah, well spotted, Gemma. Okay, so that's the total Q. And I, I, I got an over spend on capacitance here, we've got on the other side. But that's no worry, it's just an example. Second bit, find P total. Well, we've got the um, six kilowatts of R2 plus the 2.5 kilowatts of R1 plus the 13 kilowatts of motor equals 19, 21 and a half. So now, for apparent power, we can consider our, our power triangle. We've got P is equal to 21.5. Q is equal to minus 7.3. The negative sign is really irrelevant here. And we want to calculate because we're going to square it in a minute. That's K var. This is kilowatts. We want to know S along here. So we can get that from the power triangle. S is equal to the square root of PT squared plus QT squared. That's root 21.5 squared plus 7.3 squared. The square end's going to drop the negative sign anyway, it's irrelevant. If you wish to use the uh, no, it wouldn't be wrong. You're because what you're saying is you've got a you've got a real part that's twenty one point five. You've got a but I'd expect you then to say instead of using Pythagoras theorem, you then say um, convert into polar form. Yeah. Because then you've got, you're also what you're doing is calculating your angle in there as well. All right. I think because the personally because the question is asking for the apparent power, and then the power factor separately, because that conversion to polar is not going to give you that's going to give you angle, not the cosine of the angle. Yeah, I think because the way the question's worded, that, that would lead me to do it this way, but that don't mean your way is wrong. Yeah, because that that's your your calculator is doing two calculations in one go, as you, as using Pythagoras theorem to get the magnitude of the polar number, and that's doing a tan calculation to get the angle. Yeah. All right, and the answer to that is 22.7 kVA. Is that what your method come up with, uh, Roger? Okay. It's a useful check, though. Yeah.
what in here now you mustn't take 7.3 away but what what you if you do that you get doing it wrong but it's plus minus 7.3 squared and when you square it it's going to drop that negative sign anyway all right Two what? Yeah. 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 All right. So that's the third one. Total apparent power, 22.7 kVA. Line current. How can we get the line current? Four hundred. So we know that S is equal to I times E. Therefore, I is equal to S over E. That's twenty-two seven hundred over four hundred. I've got 56.8 amps. Yeah, okay, when you when you've got volts, you've got to take your killer away from your S. You've got to put in VA. Yeah, all the units, all the quantities, Lewis must be in the same multiple. And then the power factor. There's cosine of the angle. And that's this angle in here. Which is P over S. Twenty one point five over twenty two point seven. Point nine four seven. Yeah. Now us a ratio. If you want to know what the angle is in degrees, then you'll you'll do the anti cosine of it. And no, no. We when we talked about power factor correction last time, we said there was a law of diminishing returns. We're 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 actually the wrong side. we because we've got negative Q overall. We got too much capacitance in this circuit. Anyway, we're going over the other way. Normally, you'd you'd err on the inductive side, yeah. And I'd say like about 0 0.9, 0 0.94 is really good. You don't want a hit unity because that brings in all that issues about resonance and that kind of thing, yeah. All right. Everybody happy with that? Yeah, and that's that type of thing you might, you could get a question on that type of thing in the exam. So we'll have a go at a couple of them later. Okay. So. at now is solve an AC circuit using the power triangle method. Alright, so we've got a circuit here, we've got a circuit where 
We've got eight ohms of inductance in series. So we've given a value for the inductive reactance, not a millihenry value of the inductor. At these terminals here, you're being told, so at the terminals um, three and four, you've got 60 volts. And then we've got a five ohm um, capacitive reactance in parallel with 12 ohms of resistance. And the question saying, calculate the current in each circuit element, the voltage between terminals 1 and 2, and the impedance between terminals 1 and 2. Alright? So we'll have a look now at how you'd go about tackling that problem. And what I've got on the next page is a slightly smaller I thought I used to have, maybe. Solver. You've got the voltage there. What will that voltage allow me to calculate? Which current, Roger? What through the resistor or through the to the capacitor? Both of them, yeah, because they're in parallel and they've both got that 60 volts. So you've got them isolated as one component with one voltage across them. We can calculate the currents. Yeah. So we can go IR is equal to E13 over the resistance. We can not use complex values here because we've got um, complex components. So look, that's 60 volts at angle 0 degrees divided by 12 ohms 5 amps angle 0 degrees. C again that's E13 is the voltage across it and then we want the XC value so we're again talking about 60 volts at angle zero what's the value for XC Yeah, five angle minus ninety. This is where the this is where the knowledge comes in with this module. You've got to remember capacitance negative ninety degree angle, or if you're working in radians, negative pi over two. All right. So the answer to that is sixty over five is twelve, isn't it? Amps, angle, 90 degrees. And our check is... Civil, C-I-V-I-L. Capacitive circuit, current leads voltage. Voltage is zero, our current is a positive 90 degree angle. Check is good. Yeah. All right. So, what can we now calculate now that we know those two currents? You have a total current flowing through that section. It's the current through the inductor, it's IL. By, by Kirchhoff's current law, that's what we I suggest that if, if you're properly explaining your working, you'd now go 
by Kirchhoff's current law, IL, the current through the inductor, is equal to IR plus IC. And in this particular case, we've got an IR that is 5 amps on the horizontal, and we, we've got an IC that's there, and we can add those together. Be there. So we can go IL as equal to, and we put these directly into, use your calculator if you like, but you should be able to, in this particular easy case, say that the resistive, uh, resistive current is 5 plus 0J. We're going to add that to 0 minus 12J and that's why I really ought to draw that triangle the other way up, sorry because that's a negative 12J capacitive current yeah go on Lewis, sorry Ah, yeah, it does do that. It's plus, of course it is. Positive current. I had the bloody thing the right way up the first time. Sorry for causing confusion. That's plus 12J, so it is up there. And there's our IL. So that's a plus. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's the it's the reactant capacitive reactants that's negative, but because you're dividing here, it changes the sign of that to a positive at, um, current. So we end up with it being five plus 12J amps, and then we convert that to polar, because that's what we're really interested in, is the polar version, so we know how many amps it is. get 13 amps sixty seven point watt Lewis yeah so four that's what I got on my bit of paper so we end up in polar form with 13 amps at an angle of sixty seven point four degrees That's the current flowing here. So what what can we now find? Which voltage?
How would I do that, Roger? What values are I going to use? We haven't, no, we haven't, that's one thing we haven't calculated yet. We haven't got a total impedance, yeah? So we can't do that. But we have something else we can do. We could calculate the total impedance, but there's, there's another way we can tackle it and get the total impedance at the end. Now we know this current flowing in here, we can calculate that VL. So there's, yes, you could calculate the total impedance. You could have done that right at the start because you've got all the impedances. So you could have done that. All right. But I think this is probably a simpler way round that because that's a, that's a series. Um, a parallel circuit in series with another with complex components so as a tricky and lot there'd be a lot of conversions backwards and forwards in that and I think this way is probably a little bit easier all right so we can go VL is equal to IL times XL So that is 13 angle 67.4 degrees times 8 angle, and the angle for an inductor is 90 degrees. The answer to that is, so we've got to do 13 times 8, and 67.4 plus significant figures 157 yeah so for that component which is an inductor we got a current through it that's got an angle of 67.4 degrees so our current is about there somewhere 67.4 and our Voltage is round here at 157 degrees. Civil. Inductor, this is V, that's I. Inductor says voltage should lead current and that's further round the circle anti-clockwise than the current. So we're not we're not got a zero reference here, but we've got a current going round that way anti-clockwise there's further ahead uh, a voltage that's further ahead than the current it's leading it yep. so the check again using civil is good always worthwhile how do you these two they're not added together they're multiplied if you multiply the magnitudes so 8 times 13 is 104 and you add the angles yeah all right when you earlier on Gemma just to confirm earlier on the opposite thing is when you when you divide you divide the magnitude of the denominator into the magnitude of the numerator and you subtract the angles all right. Yeah. All 
All right? Now, what can we find now? Now we've got that voltage. Yeah, looking at what the question is asked for. Yeah. So we can find B12 now because by Kirchhoff's voltage law, by KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, the voltage in is equal to VL plus P13 because voltage law is about loops around the circuit. So if we look at this, we've got a. I always put um, arrows on the right direction. So that's the most positive terminal. So you put the arrow at it. And then when current's flowing through, the arrow goes in the opposite direction to current flow. So we've got one clockwise arrow on the left-hand side of the equation, two anti-clockwise arrows added together, and up to that. That's Kirchhoff's voltage law. So if you put your arrows on carefully, always pointing towards the most positive terminal, you can then look around that loop and say I've got one clockwise arrow, E12, and I've got two anti-clockwise arrows. Put one lot on the left-hand side, one lot on the other, and you've got a Kirchhoff's voltage law equation. Yeah. So if we add VL to E13, we'll get E12. 104 angle 157 degrees we got to add that to 60 angle 0 degrees how are we going to do that yeah we need to co convert to rectangular so that is convert your 104 angle 157 I'll give you a little tip here about whether you'll push your rectangular polar conversion buttons properly. We've got, to convert this one, we've got an angle that's 157 degrees. We're in the, we're in the second quadrant. Yeah. So we're expecting a negative real term because we go on that, that way on the horizontal axis and a positive J term. And that's a way of just checking that you haven't pushed your buttons wrong or missed a negative sign out. So you get, should get a, a, a negative real part to your um, complex number and a positive J part. I've got minus 96.01 plus 40J. And we're adding that to 60 plus 0J. Minus 36. Uh, plus 40J. Uh, 
and in polar I get uh, 53.8 volts angle 132 degrees. Yeah. And now we've got the total input voltage here, E12, and the total current flowing. The total impedance calculation is relatively simple. ZT is D12 over IL. 53.8 angle 132 over IL which was 13, angle 67.4 and I've got 4.14 amps angle 64.6 degrees. So if problems like that, it's just a matter of being able to look at what information you've got and where's the first hook in to get another piece of information and then building on that gradually as you work through the question. I put amps, didn't I? Well, Scott, I spot my deliberate mistake out. Four point one four ohms angle same here. Yep. So that's sorry? Yeah it don't matter. No, you'll see in a minute. Three angle minus thirty three point one degrees. That's I times the voltage which is the total voltage. which is 159 angle 65 so we do that and you got 3 times 159 4 of 7 seconds. angle Not a hundred and fifty nine degrees. It's a hundred and fifty nine angle sixty five degrees. Plus minus thirty three point one plus sixty five. That's better. Thirty one point nine. 
knew that shouldn't be over 90. So now what we've got is we've got our power at 405. We've got S at 407. And we've got an angle in here at 31.9 degrees. Someone right now, because that's where we'd expect on the with an angle. Yeah. And if we do the same, isolating if we isolate the inductor, so if we say Q is equal to complex conjugate of the current times EL, the voltage across the inductor, that's three angle minus thirty three point one degrees times and the inductor voltage was 84 volts angle 123.1 so we've got 3 times 84 252 Bar angle ninety should be, and that's what you'd expect to do, isn't it? Yep. So we've got a power with no angle. The angles cancel out, and then multiplied by the complex conjugate, you've got an S with a positive angle in this case. Reductive reactants cause no um, reactive power. It's got a 90 degree angle. Yeah. You'd end up with minus 90 there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. If you're going to use the I times the current times voltage version of power with complex values, you've got to multiply by the to get power. You've got to multiply by the conjugate, i.e., change the sign of the angle. Yeah. Just something you've got to remember, I'm afraid. Maybe have to put that question in the exam. Sorry?